Hello, welcome to a block of the month called Great Foundations. So Great Foundations is going to be a nine block, sorry, a nine block uh, program. This quilt up here behind me has got all nine of the blocks in it. And we're going to start off with this one, which is block one, but I'll talk to you just a little bit more about the Great Foundations before we get too engrossed in the actual quilt. So it's called Great Foundations because it's sewn onto a foundation. So it's called foundation piecing. The reason we do foundation piecing is because we're trying to do some um, small, delicate little shapes um, or slightly angular, different sorts of shapes that are harder to cut and piece in a normal way. So we sew them onto a foundation, in this case paper, and that allows us to do much more accurate intricate piecing uh, so it's just there's other methods of course for doing things but the method i'm going to show you is foundation piecing onto a paper foundation you can use other things for your foundation you could use a, um, some different sorts of stabilizers wash away tear away any number of different products are available on the market that could be used i'm going to show you just on regular paper to be sewing onto a pattern piece i'll show you a little bit more shortly about that but all the shapes and things are already laid out in the pattern. So when you sew onto a foundation, there's um, all sorts of little things along the way. So I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process to show you how we're going to do that. So what the program is going to be is a nine month or nine block uh, program for the nine blocks. And, and then towards the end, there'll be an opportunity to um, purchase and download a pattern for a finishing so that you could finish it off in the same way as that one or any one of these three options that are going to be available. So the pattern is available to purchase and download from gourmetquilter.com. It's called Great Ex sorry, Great Foundations. Um, and so it's going to, the pattern that you can purchase at the moment is going to be for the nine blocks. So they're going to come out each month. So it's just a one-off fee for the nine blocks. Each month you just get the new uh, block, uh, a link sent to you so that you can download it. Um, and as I said, the finishing will be a separate pattern that can be purchased later if you choose to. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we do the foundation piecing. Um, the fabrics, I'm just using regular cotton fabrics, of course, the quilting ones. Um, and I'm showing it to you in the talk, these lovely Japanese soft talk colours. Um, and so, and, and you actually, in the, just to go back to the different layouts that I've got shown here, in each of the quilts that I have done for those, I have done the blocks in identical colours. So I've made three blocks exactly in those colours and three blocks in those colours. And then I've complete, I've done completely different things with the settings, although they are all in those Japanese top colours. Um, so the only other things that you really need when you're doing the foundation piecing is you need a printer that you can print your patterns through. So any other product, of course, that you use instead of paper, if you chose to do it a different way, you would need to be able to print it or you could trace it. Um, but you get a more accurate finish if you can print off some of these um, shapes and things. You need your general sewing machine, scissors, threads, iron. Um, and the only other thing that I really think that is a really helpful thing are these flat head pins. These have got little flower heads on them. Um, they're slightly longer than normal. They're quilting pins, but they're very helpful with this sort of thing because much as I'm not a pin user because they don't like me, or maybe it's me that doesn't like them, Either way, with the pins, the flat head pins work really well. We do need to anchor the, um, the fabric to the paper pattern at some stage, and I found that they work really well. You can use a little glue stick and a dab of glue. There's other things you can do. I'm going to use pins today, just for a change. So this is going to be the block pattern. So you've got a picture here. There's going to be fabric. So I'm suggesting in general that we're starting out each uh, for each block with some strips of fabric, which I would give you the information in this case they're four inch um, by half the width of the fabric 21 inch and for this particular block that varies slightly and then we're going to cut them into some smaller pieces so i've already done some cutting into my smaller pieces that i've listed there so i've got two different backgrounds in here they're very similar but there's actually two different fabrics that i've used for the backgrounds and then i've used three colors so we've got a color one a colour two and a colour three. So I've cut all my pieces out according to the notes there. And so the two backgrounds, if you're going to use two, one's called background AA and one is called background BB. If you only want to use one background, that's fine. You just need to make sure you've got enough fabric for both bits. 
Um, also, you may want to do something in a completely different colorway. So I've done a couple of other colorways for the blocks. So this is the block that I'm going to show you today. But here's a suggestion for something quite different. I've used the one fabric for the background, a little dotty gray, and I'm just using some sort of grays and different tones in there. There'll be some other colors coming into that quilt when I get further down the track. This one here I've done with these uh, scrumptious bluey greeny colors. And this one here I've just gone a little wild and gone into some really bright colors. And again, I've used two different backgrounds, two slightly different yellows for the background there. So that was just to give you some suggestions um, and ideas that you could do things in a different colorway. It doesn't have to be these talks. They're not everybody's taste. I just think that they're very delicious. So that's that. So I've done my cutting. I'm all ready to go. So I'm going to show you now. The pattern is going to give you some step-by-step -step instructions here. And I'm going to go through those with you on the video now so that you've got the video and you've got the pattern back up. So this particular part one or block one, there's a whole lot more involved in showing you how to do it because after this you'll know how to do things. Um, so, But there will be a video for each part as well as the pattern each month. So that may help you. So with your pattern sheets, they're going to look like this. So there's actually six segments or sections in this particular uh, block that we're making. And I can show you here, I've got some of the sections and we're going to make one of the sections so that you can see how I do it step by step. So there's kind of two main shapes, but they're in reverse. And then this, this other sort of wedge one, which is actually going to go around whoops, upside down today. That goes in there and that's going to come in there. And your pattern tells you where it joins to section A, to, to section B, etc. So all that information is there. So when we foundation piece, it's it's a really good idea where all the sec sections of your blocks and done in alphabetical order. So this one here is upside down, is section, I've got on here D and E. We're going to start with A and B. I've already cut those out. So you're going to roughly cut out your shape away from the dotted line. The dotted line is your final cutting line for the block. The straight lines are going to be stitching lines, just so that you know. And then everything is numbered accordingly. So this is A1, A2, and A3. And the reason for the numbering, in, there is a, a reason for them to go in numerical order. We position their fabrics in those orders. So we're going to put fabric... A1 in first, then we're going to add A2, which happens to be color one. So that's all labeled with your fabrics. And then we're going to add a color, sorry, that's color one. And we're going to add a color two. I'm now I'm going to confuse you entirely. Uh, you'll see what I'm doing as we go. So I suggest that you cut your patterns roughly. Uh, give yourself a margin. It can be a very rough sort of shape because they are going to be trimmed down onto the dotted line later. So don't try and cut those out exactly because that wouldn't help you at this stage. So we, what we're going to do is this my A. This is my A. That's what it looks like there. We're sewing the fabrics onto the wrong side of the paper. So this is what we're going to create this morning, this afternoon, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. So with my fabrics here, I can pop these out of the way and I'm going to grab myself some of these flathead pins. So first of all, we need a background and I've said background AA because I'm using the two. Now you were told to cut two different sizes. So there is a little bit of wastage when you do foundation piecing. I should mention that because you trim away bits and pieces, but I found it's by far the easiest way is to start with some rectangles that are slightly larger than we need so that we've got a little bit of room to move, that we're not panicking about everything. Um, so for these segments here, you need to have the slightly smaller size. When we do this segment B and whatever the other one is, you use the slightly larger background piece because it's, it's longer. So we're going to take whatever your choice is, whether it's background one or two, but we've suggested the background AA. So I'm going to use this one. This is my background AA. I'm going to put it on the back of my pattern with the wrong side of the fabric facing the wrong side of the paper. So if I lay it down, so I lay down the fabric right side down, lay the pattern over the top, and you can see this dotted line. Make sure that the fabric extends beyond the dotted line. 
and lay that down and I'm going to pop a couple of pins in that just to hold it in place. Oops, I don't want that one there. Or you could, as I said, do a dab of glue, but don't put too much glue because then you can't get it off easily. So now we need to add on. So we've got piece one on, A1. We need A2 next. And that is colour one. So these are my colour one pieces. So that's going to be covering that shape there. However, we're going to put it on, and it's kind of like a stitch and flip method. So we're going to put it to the wrong side. It gets a little bit confusing here. So you want these two fabrics to be right sides together and not covering the shape at this stage that it's going to take up but away from because you're going to sew it on and it's going to flip out. So in order to position that correctly I have a little lamp here. If you've got some sort of light source that you can use that would help you quite a lot. A light box, maybe go to the window if you need to or just hold it up to the light. So I'm going to use this because I can see through where I've got that fabric. So what I'm trying to do is create a seam, quarter of an inch or more, past this line here so that I can join A2 to A1. So I'm going to position that. Now you've got to make sure that you position it with enough left for a seam allowance and enough left that if you were to flip that over, it's going to cover that whole shape area. So I'll just do that just to show you what I mean. So the fabric's away from where it's going to be. So I've pinned it as if I had sewn it there. And if I Way. flip that over then you can see that that's definitely covering that whole area that I need it to cover right out into the seam allowance and everything so that's what we're after so you want to be able to see through that there's enough for a seam allowance in there and then pop a pin in to hold it in place pin on the line if you want to but you don't necessarily need to be on the line we're going to sew along this line. Now we're going to sew starting beyond, at least a quarter of an inch beyond where we need to for our segment and right out past the seam allowance area as well. So we're going to sew right on that line. We're not going to sew near that line or even next to that line. We're going to sew on that line. Now another thing you need to do when you're sewing foundation piecing like this onto paper, because we're going to be tearing the paper away, you need to reduce your stitch length down to something shorter. Normally uh, a lot of machines have a sort of 2.5 size. I'm going down to something like 1.8, uh, smaller than you would normally use. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that it helps perforate the paper more so it's going to be easier to tear away. And the other is because you're tearing away, sometimes you can pull up the stitches and if they're slightly smaller, they seem to hold better. So we're going to sew right on that line starting beyond enough for a seam allowance and I'm just going to start sewing and I'm just going to follow that stitching line not next to it, not near it, right along it. Okay. So we have already got a piece on. We are doing well. So what you can see now is that I've got a seam line coming along here. I've got a lot of excess fabric that we don't need here. If we take that pin out, when we pull that shape over, that's covering that. And yes, you could leave it, but it makes it bulky. So I like to remove all that. So what I do now is I'll fold my paper down right along that stitched line that I've done and leave that area exposed. Now, not this bit here that you need, this bit here that you don't need. And I'm going to trim away, so the paper's folded behind, and I'm going to trim now. And I can place my ruler so that my quarter inch in from the edge runs along my stitching line. And I can trim away that bit there that we don't need. So when I say there's a little bit of wastage, yes, we'll be trimming off bits and pieces like that. And now we can unfold the paper. Fold that back out. And at this stage, I like to just give that a little press, just for the dry iron just so that that seam sits nice and flat there. And um, I'll pin out because it's gathering a bit. And now we're ready to do our next piece. So the next piece we want is colour two. So this is my colour two. So I grab one of the pieces that I've already pre-cut to that. And we're going to go through the same process of positioning on here again. So I'll have my little light. Now again, right sides together. 
of the fabric, working on the back of the paper. And I've, again, I can see through, because I've got that light there, can you see that shadowing? I just need it to extend to be right along. This is the seam line we're doing here. It needs to be past that so that there's going to be enough for a seam allowance. And again, I'll pop some pins in just to hold it in place. Um, you can check again if you need to, but as long as it's extending beyond your seam areas and things, that should be fine. And you'll get the hang of this. The first couple of times you might sew things back to front, but you'll soon work that out that they're not in the right place. So again, back to the sewing machine, and now we're going to sew right along this line. Um, we're going to start out from beyond the seam allowance area and go out past it there. So if, if you're not sure about starting something out there, just grab a pencil and ruler and just draw that line a little bit further, um, or just start sewing so that you sew on the line. Not near the line, not next to the line. We're sewing on the line. Just gone out past my seam allowance area. That's all going to get trimmed away, so it's not important particularly that we keep within that seam area or anything. So the same thing again. I'm going to flip my paper away, but this time, because we had sewn this line here beyond what the line we've just sewn, that's already attached. So what I like to do is just, just carefully pull that out. You're tearing the paper, that's fine. We're not going to need the paper in the long term. The paper doesn't stay in the quilt, but it's very, very helpful in the process. So just tear that away from that little bit of sewing that was preventing that folding along that seam line. And again, I... I flip that over, you probably can't see that thread because it's blended very nicely, but I can just see it enough to be able to position my ruler right along my sewing line so that I can trim off all these little excess bits that we don't need there. And then I can flip that out, flip back my paper, and again I'm going to just iron that quickly so everything's sitting nice and flat, so it looks a little odd at this stage. However, we've got some dotted lines, which are our outside cutting line, and we're just going to trim this whole piece up. So already we've done one section. So I'm going to lay my ruler on now. So I've got that nice quarter inch line in. So I just make sure that the quarter inch in from the edge of the ruler sits right on my drawn, sorry, on the solid straight line. And that should give me, so that I'm cutting right along that dotted line. We want to be cutting along that dotted line. This kind of piecing is all about um, keeping things accurate, but everything is there to help you keep it accurate. We're not expecting you to be able to be accurate without some help. So you cut along that dotted line, trim away all that excess so that we end up with a shape that's ready to piece to its neighbour so that we can have a nice block at the end. And then you'll notice that the little dotted lines this, they just come into a little corner in there. So it's not essential that you do this, but it just means you don't have those little wings sitting out. So I just cut off right again on that dotted line, that funny little corner shape there, and it just helps a little bit later on with the piecing. So here we have a shape. And we can see that in this quilt here, somewhere I'm gonna be able to find that piece. It's probably around the other way. We won't do that. <laughs> it's the same as that. So what we what we need to do then is make our next sections. There's six sections all together. The next one to make would be the B section, and this one is a slightly different shape. So you're going to do. I won't go through every step with that because um, it's very similar. You're starting off with with a background BB this time. So this is your longer piece for this different shape because it's a longer stretch from here. You're going to be popping that behind, same as we've done before, behind your pattern piece. We'll just kind of start the process, but you can see how it's done. Then we're going to lay a color one, because that's B2, down the same. Remember we had that light source to show us where that's going to be positioned. So fabrics, right sides together. Look through, make sure that you can see enough fabric showing on the seam and that it's going to be covering 
all the area when you flip it over after you've sewn it. And so it goes on. So I think we've been through the process enough. It's in your notes if, if you're needing to refer back to it. So I won't waste your time going through another whole segment. I have already made one here. But what I did want to do was to show you, we then join up three segments to make half the block and then obviously the other three for the other half of the block and then we join the two halves together. And I just wanted to show you that we're pressing our seams open and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the joining process here. So what we've got is these three segments here. So we're going to join, which is A, this is A, we're going to join this to B. So this is B, so that goes to that. And this one here says it goes to A. So yes, we've got the right bits together. We're going to put them right sides together. And yes, I know you know how to do all this, but we're just going to go through it just to make sure. So we're going to line up our edges. Our little um, points here should match and things. And we're going to, again, sew right on that line. So if everything's all sitting as it should, everything will come out beautifully pieced together. And again, I'm just going to, and I'm still using my shorter stitch length. So sewing right on that line will help with our final result. And we're going to press that seam allowance open. So bring the iron in and press the fabrics apart. So still leaving the paper in, that's okay. We're going to be taking the paper out later, but it helps actually, the paper's quite helpful because it gives it some sort of a firm foundation. How's that? I'm doing foundations. So now to join the next segment on, um, I, what I'm suggesting, because we're going to have this whole conglomeration of seams in the middle here, is that from these two seams that you've just done, I'd suggest that you grab the seam allowance and just tear some of that out at the moment. You don't have to take the whole lot out, just an inch or two of both of those seam bits, just to make it less bulk when we're sewing up that centre area for the moment. We will be taking all the paper out later, but don't take it all out just yet, because it's still helpful to have it in there. So, and then this one is going here, this is segment section C, that's going to go on to B. Same thing again. We'll join that up quickly and then you can see the two halves ready to be joined together. So as you can see, it is a, an accurate type of sewing, but it's not asking for an unreasonable level of accuracy because it's all kind of done for you with the pattern. But it allows you to do some um, unusual shapes, um, particularly angular geometric type shapes, without any real um, pain. Although it sometimes can take just a little while to get your head working back to front, because anything that you're working on, like when you look at the pattern, it, the pattern shapes, it's going to be mirror imaged when it comes out. So kind of think of it like applique, because when we do fused applique, we do that whole mirror image thing as well. So I've taken my pieces out before I press my seam, but never mind. So I'm going to press that seam open as well. And there we have half of our block already. So I have already made the other half. So when we put the two together, and that's just going to be a, a seam down the middle, same as we would normally do, sewing on the line, and there will be your completed block, which will look something like that by the time you've finished. And then, at the, so at the end of that, um, this one I haven't pressed those seams open, but I did find it was much better to do so. So the back of this one, you can see I've pressed all the, the seams open. And that, so at this stage, you can take out those papers if you want to. So, so one, one thing, thing to, to note about this type of patchwork is that sometimes you end up with some bias type edges because we've used some unusual shapes and things to join up because you'll notice that the grain isn't that important um, in the fabric if that's something that you normally consider. 
Um, so what you don't want to have is your blocks all sitting with edges that can get a little bit sloppy for too long. So I tend to leave everything, and you could if you wanted to, tack them down, but you don't need to. I would leave my papers in for the time being, just like that, until I'm ready to do something else with the blocks, and then I would take the papers out. However, if you would like to take your papers out in the meantime, and you've got a favourite little bit of sport on TV that you like something to do while you're watching, that's a great time to be taking papers out, because it can be a little bit tedious. Um, you do need to uh, tear them away a little bit carefully from the stitching, and sometimes you get a little bit stuck in the corner. Or you could just spray a little bit with some water to dampen it, and that softens the paper if you've got some tight little bits. Um, but generally speaking, I don't have too much trouble getting it out, and that's partly because we've used a slightly smaller stitch length, which has perforated the paper. And if you could have used a slightly lighter weight paper to print it on, that would have been helpful. You can get specific papers for doing foundation piecing on, uh, they're not as readily available that I'm aware of, uh, but they are available as far as I know. Uh, but I'm just using regular printing paper for mine. So hopefully that's explained how to do that. This is block one. There's another eight to come. Go to gourmetcoulter.com if you're looking to purchase the pattern that's going to come as a downloadable pattern, and it's going to be a one-off fee for the whole nine blocks. And then there'll be another pattern available to purchase if you choose to to do some of the finishing and some different alternatives for that. So thank you and enjoy your great foundations.